let g be a group and little g and g prove that the number of conjugates of little g uh, is the index of the centralizer of little g in capital G. So uh, a lot going on here. Uh, so first of all, what is the centralizer? So the centralizer of little g is the set of all of the elements x in our group that actually commute with little g. So it's all of the x's in our group that actually just commute with uh, this element here, little g. So it's the centralizer of an element, which is very different uh, from the center of a group, right? The center of a group is the set of all elements that commute with everything. Um, this is just the set of all elements that commute with little g. So proof, let's work this out. We're going to have to come up with a bijection uh, between the order of the conjugacy class of little g and the right cosets of this guy in g. So let me backtrack. Let's start off by defining some things here to make the notation easier. So first we're going to set h to be the centralizer of little g, just for notation to clear things up. And we'll let big R, this is going to be the set of all of the right cosets. So these are the right cosets, right cosets of H in, in capital G. Okay. And uh, again, for notation, we'll let little c, this will be the conjugacy class, or rather big C, be the conjugacy class of little g. Okay, be the conjugacy class of little g. And so we can restate our, our claim. So our claim is that the number of conjugates of g and g, well, what is that? That is the order of the conjugacy class, is equal to the index of the centralizer of little g and big G. This is the number of right cosets of h in g. So uh, that's the order of r, right? That's the cardinality, rather, of r, right? The cardinality of the conjugacy class uh, is equal to the cardinality of r. That's what we have to show. So let's let's create a bijection. So we're going to uh, define. I'm going to put define in quotes because we will have to show that this map is actually well defined. So define uh, phi from say r to c by the following. We're going to take uh, phi of a right coset, so hx. And we're going to send that uh, to the element x inverse gx, which is certainly an element in the conjugacy class of little g. It's certainly conjugate uh, to little g. By definition of conjugacy classes, this is what uh, its elements look like. Uh, so first, we have to show phi is actually a function. In other words, uh, if the inputs are the same and we apply phi, do we get the same result? Um, so claim phi is well-defined. Claim phi is well defined. In other words, if we have two cosets and they're equal, uh, does the output uh, also uh, produce equal results? So if hx is equal to hy, we want uh, you know x inverse gx to be equal to y inverse gy. So we let me do that over here. We want x inverse gx to be equal to y inverse GY. So to show it's well defined. So if the inputs are the same, the outputs must also be the same. So uh, two right cosets are equal. This means that x y inverse is an h. Right? That's the that's what it means for two cosets to be equal. But h is special. H is the centralizer of little g. Right. So that means that this element x y inverse actually commutes with little g. So x, y inverse, you can put it in parentheses, g is equal to g, x, y inverse. Kind of a fun proof. <laughs> and again, this is what we have to show over here. So we can drop the parentheses uh, at some point. And it looks like uh, we need to get rid of this x here. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by x inverse on the left. So y inverse, skipping some steps here, g is equal to x inverse g x y inverse. And now what I'll do is I'll multiply by y on the right. So y inverse 
gy is equal to, well, y times y inverse is the identity. So this ends up being x inverse gx. A little bit terse, a little bit confusing, but uh, sometimes it's necessary. You know, it's, it's good for you. So that works, right? If hx is equal to hy, then the outputs are the same. Hence, phi is well-defined. So hence, phi is well-defined. All right, so we've shown it's well-defined. All we have to do now is show it's a bijection. So to show it's a bijection, we have to show that it is one-to-one -one and it is onto. Let's start by showing that it is one-to-one. -one. So claim phi is one-to-one. -one. So to show it's one-to-one, -one, we'll suppose that uh, phi of hx is equal to phi of hy. So suppose phi of hx is equal to phi of hy. And so what does this mean? This means that x inverse gx is equal to y inverse gy. And again, what do we have to show? Let me go over here. To, we need to have some foresight usually to do these problems. We have to show that hx is equal to hy. In other words, we have to show that xy inverse is in g. In other words, we have to show that x, y, uh, in h, <laughs> in h, in other words, we have to show that x, y inverse commutes with little g, right? Because h is the centralizer. So if x, y inverse is in h, then it should commute with little g. So we have this equation over here, and we have to come up with this one. So it looks like we can play the same game we played before. Let's start by multiplying by y inverse on the right. So we get x inverse g x y inverse equals y inverse g right because y inverse times y that gets rid of the y right because that's e and so everything there cleans up now let's simply get rid of the x inverse so we'll multiply by x on the left so we end up with g x y inverse right because x times x inverse is e skipping a lot of steps here and this will be x y inverse, again, skipping some steps, using associativity, etc. we end up with this. Well, that means that the element x, y inverse commutes with, commutes with little g. So x, y inverse is in the centralizer of little g, which we said was h. And so this means that x, hx is equal to hy. So this shows that phi is one to one. We started with phi of hx equal to phi of hy. And we showed that hx is equal to hy. So, so phi is 1 to 1. Phi is 1 to 1. So a little bit dirty, uh, the proof. You know, it's uh, uh, skipping a lot of steps, but it's long. And I'm trying to keep this video as uh, short as possible. So claim phi is onto. So to show it's onto, well, let's, let me go ahead and write down phi again. So phi took a coset and sent it to x inverse gx and phi map the set of cosets into the conjugacy class of little g. So to show it's onto, we'll start by taking an element in the codomain. So we'll take a y in the conjugacy class. So take any little y in the conjugacy class. And we have to produce a coset that phi sends to y. Again, we have to produce an element of R, which is a right coset, such that phi takes that coset and spits out uh, little y. So because y is in the conjugacy class of little g, this means there exists an element uh, x in our group g. There's no need, no need for a comma there. Such that y is equal to x, g, x inverse, okay? y is equal to x, g, x inverse. And now we somehow uh, need to find a coset that maps to this. Now, if you look at phi, it's x inverse g, x. Here we have x, g, x inverse. So I think the coset that's going to work is h, x inverse. So note, let's try it. I hope it works. <laughs> h, x inverse is an element of the set of right cosets. And let's apply phi to it, and uh, it should work. Phi of h, x inverse. Well, using the definition of phi, this is x inverse 
inverse, gx inverse. And so this is x, g, x, inverse. Oh, and this is y, which is an element in the conjugacy class. So we have taken any y in our conjugacy class. We have produced a right coset such that phi takes that coset and sends it to y. So this shows phi is onto beautiful stuff. This, this shows phi is onto. We got a little bit of a cold, so. Uh, but we did it. We did it. Uh, this shows phi is onto. So phi is one to one, and it's onto. So thus, phi is one to one and onto. So it's a bijection. So it is a bijection. So the cardinality of R is equal to the cardinality of the conjugacy class of little g and g. So the number of conjugates, that's this, the number of conjugates of little g and g is equal to the number of right cosets of h and g. In other words, uh, the index of the centralizer of little g and g, which is the number of right cosets of this guy in g, is equal to the order of the conjugacy class, right? The number of conjugates. This is a useful result that we'll use later to prove the class equation. I hope that made sense.